So our first presentation today is around National Childhood Obesity Plan, and this is going to be presented by Karen Everson. Karen is the National Program Manager for Long-Term Conditions, Childhood Obesity and Acute Demands at the Ministry of Health, based here in Hamilton. New, Ze New Zealand's National Childhood Obesity Plan is a critical framework for all of us working in the nutrition and physical activity. Karen is going to provide us with an overview of the plan and outline the progress to date. Please welcome Karen. The Ministry of Health said it had a standing ovation <laughs> before they've been. Um, good morning, everyone. It's fantastic to be home. I was in Whangarei yesterday um, talking about the Childhood Obesity Programme um, with Whangarei um, providers and the Health Board, and it was really nice to be able to say, No, I have to be in Hamilton. I have to be home tonight, last night, for, for today. So it's great to see you. In some places, I recognise from when I worked uh, here at um, Waikato DHB in the Public Health Unit. So I'm going to, uh, 15 minutes, I haven't got long, so um, feel free to talk to me during the breaks and other bits and pieces, but we'll um, do a bit of a whistle-stop tour of, of the Childhood Obesity Programme um, that the Ministry of Health is, is leading for the government. So most of you will have seen, or all of you will have seen the triangle, and um, these were the initiatives that the uh, Ministers of Social Development across the government uh, wanted to put an extra, extra emphasis on or to ensure that we uh, implemented properly. So the triangle isn't exclusive. There, there are things, obvious things in there that you might think are missing, but they uh, doesn't mean that the things that were already happening, the things that were already important in New Zealand, uh, weren't, aren't part of the solution for childhood obesity. A prime example is um, breastfeeding activity um, and some other uh, other services, well, child tamaniki services, that are already happening in New Zealand, they're already important and they're already contributing. So these initiatives really were just to sort of highlight some of the areas that, that we felt collectively as a country we could do a bit better in and put some emphasis on. It was divided into three sort of main areas, some targeted approaches. What's the health system, the core health system's response to um, children that are overweight? And this is where the health target uh, and the linking of the before school check um, initiative with, with general practice and with community and, and um, District Health Board and, and NGO provided community uh, physical activity and nutrition programs. And then we had the areas of increased support, which is, is just really implementing the things that are out there that we know are good practice. The gestational diabetes guidelines, the healthy um, eating, healthy weight in pregnancy, the referrals, using the Green Script referrals process um, appropriately and effectively, and, um, and Sport New Zealand involved here and reorienting Kiwi Sport to increase participation in some groups that are, are known to be not completely active in that space. And then, of course, everything needs to be underpinned by a broad population health approach. And this is where all of the agencies have some part to play in, in helping with the solution. Because there's no fantastic um, silver bullet here. There's not one thing that's going to make everything perfect at the end of the day. But we do need an infrastructure and a societal shift and this is where every agency has its role to play. From the food industry, which at this stage is predominantly around, um, around the health star rating, which you will have all seen, and um, my children quite actively and excitedly said, all oh, my Nutri-Grains just shifted from sub two to four. How did, how did it become so healthy, Mum? I need nutri -grain every day. Um, but, but the industry is actually act actively reformulating their um, products to be able to increase their, their health star ratings. It's within brand, it's not using, it's not on whole foods and fresh foods, which are, are some of the things that we want people to be eating, but it's a good start to start to get some of the products um, nutrition changed. The marketing and advertising uh, to children, I think many of you will have put submissions into the Advertising Standards Authority around what we need to do to change that. And we'll be waiting with bated breath as to the outcomes of that. And the voluntary health pledges. <clears throat> and this is where the industry has a part to play with what can they do and what, will they, what, what, what are they willing to do and how far are they willing to shift in the short to medium term around some of the, um, the items and the way that they, they have product placement, they formulate their food, they market their food, um, and, and, and approach particularly young children. That's a slower piece of work, and I guess this is where the government is, come, is, is encouraging the industry to see where it will move before it starts to think about regulation, because the last thing the government wants to do is to regulate below where this, the industry might actually self-moderate it, uh, itself to. And you're starting to see some behaviours change in some of the particularly New Zealand-based um, food industry. We've got um, the general public 
this is one of the areas that Sir Peter Blackman particularly talks quite heavily about in the World Health Organization report and when he meets with us. The information to the general public is so confused and cluttered, there are so many messages, and in particular the health system is really good at providing contrary and contradictory advice to people, so no one actually knows what they should do. The women's magazines, um, the kids' magazines are all really good at this latest new fad and fashion. And um, it's, it's very similar to when we were in the smoking cessation world. The, there's no competition. In anything and everything is a good option to begin with. And we need to um, start to try and just uh, streamline our messaging, streamline our, our channels and our approaches and become a little bit more sophisticated with our collective energies and resources. Uh, then we've got a uh, tranche of activity with um, Sport New Zealand with their uh, physical activity um, and play sport programs and here of course you've got Project Energise and then the roles of education where we're starting to see things like order in schools come through which isn't on the train but it was an initiative that's certainly starting to change things in schools. Um, health promoting schools which has been around for years and years and years just most anyone outside of health promoting schools didn't really know much about them. Um, and changing the emphasis in health promoting schools to be around physical nutrition activity to get the schools thinking a bit differently about how they structure fundraising and things at a local level and get community buy into those changes. And then across the bottom we've got the things like Healthy Families New Zealand, which I know um, isn't in this particular area, but in the areas that it is, it's starting to collate and bring together the traditional things that we know public health do really well. Cross-agency thinking, um, memorandums of understanding across um, iwi, across councils around how and what will be happening in communities to encourage and enable people to, to make the right choices. So the triangle is, um, is predominantly at this point in time focused on getting the new health target up and running. And this is around um, children who are identified as obese being referred to a clinician of some sort, shape or, or um, kind to ensure that there's um, no medical risk and um, complications that need to be managed because many of these children may have um, early, signs, early onset osteoarthritis or other complications, diabetes that need to be managed alongside getting them more active and then referral on to a community um, provider of some sort. That doesn't necessarily mean a health-based community provider. It could be a fun or initiative around community gardens and learning how the family learning how to cook and eat together. So the, the DHBs and, the, and, the, and the, all the partner agencies need to get together and think about all these referral pathways and what are the options for people in communities, particularly rural and remote New Zealand, where access to um, something that might be uh, in a city is not necessarily the same in the community areas. There's also the, the usual green script and active families um, referrals. Here you've got Project Energise working which builds some capacity and capability. Um, and there's a lot happening in the sports trusts and the sports communities uh, around um, places to send families. This is not just about the children. You know, Once they are really obese at age four, it's going to be really hard to change some of the patterns of that ongoing weight for that child, but you can change the patterns of the family and the, and the future children that are coming through in that family. So it has to be a family whānau based approach, it can't be just focused on that particular child uh, at that particular point in time. <coughs> there's, a good, um, there's a good trajectory of checks from birth right through to uh, the before school check and again with Project Energise doing some of the weighing of, and, and height measurements of kids in primary schools to look at the trend of weight gain for families and children over time in this particular region and give you some baselines. We know that if you um, start to see weight gain occurring um, with the baby early on, you may be able to modify some of the behaviours in the family or whānau around what's going into the child's mouth before two, and then moving forwards into um, other bits and pieces. So the breastfeeding programmes, all of those are still really relevant and important to help build the strong platform before the child gets to four. Uh, these particular areas around weight gain and pregnancy, we know that children who, um, or families, it's the preconception phase, so this is your youth and reproductive and sexual health workforce looking at how do we ensure that mums and dads are in the best physical shape before they even conceive the child because the DNA put down in the sperm and in the, in the um, early fetus are really important about what's going to happen for that child and what's the pattern of, of weight gain that child's going to have when they get older. It's really important we pick up gestational diabetes early in pregnancy and that women understand that they can do things about it and that it's managed during their pregnancy so that the baby is born a healthy weight. 
who also don't want the baby putting on a huge amount of weight really early in the, in the pregnant, uh, when they're born as well because they might be born a little bit small and scrawny and then they might pack on the weight and that's going to change the patterns of, of, of weight gain for, for that child right through, um, through to adulthood. And then all these bits and pieces. We've had the uh, first public awareness campaign the Health Promotion Agency um, um, put up last year when the, when the campaign for the, the obesity program was first launched. And we're now just trying to build on the physical activity guidelines that Sport New Zealand are working on with health promoting schools and in with the usual activities. And I think Martin's coming to talk about the eating and activity guidelines um, with you shortly. We're updating the weight management guidelines for children and adults, and those hope to be coming out in the next couple of months so that they've got some places for the clinicians to understand. We don't want all these kids referred to paediatricians. It's just going to put extra burden on the health system and not necessarily the most appropriate place and or people to be giving some of these more broader pharma-based intervention and um, lifestyle behaviour change modification activities. So that's being in a nutshell. Any questions? I'll go on. With the um, health staff promotion, you know, I, I work in a school with, with students and they've come up with their own voice. They'd rather see teaspoons of sugar on a product than stars to actually help them identify how much sugar is in each product. Have you got a response to that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I know that all those things were thought about at the time, but a lot of this. Um, weighed in the balance of the cost to the manufacturers and the food industry at the time and Australia had bought in the health star rating so many of the products are, are able to be marketed or, or packaged in the same um, context for both markets and that's why the, the country went with the health star rating because of our trans-Tasman relationship. So um, industry overrode health? I think it's a, it's a compromise. Everything and, and everything government does is a compromise and it talks about getting what's best for both. And at the moment we've got something to get started with. doesn't mean that that's the end point, but it does mean that we've at least got something working at the moment and we just need to slowly change and improve it as we get smarter and more sophisticated. Not just about sugar anyway, it's about fat and clothes. It's the whole package, not just the one. We've got to start somewhere. Can I just ask you about the updating of the child obesity guidelines? What sort of consultation process or what group is doing that? Is that the weight management one? Yes. Yeah. So the original um, group that was that wrote the first lot of guidelines were recommissioned if they were still around in New Zealand, and then a couple where the people had moved on and the group um, nominated a couple of other people to fill in the gaps that they left. That's been um, coordinated by BPAC in the South Island, the organisation uh, who did the first update of the guidelines and their um, mandate was to look at what evidence has changed since the last guidelines. So they'll be essentially the same format sort of, um, and things that have changed since then will be the things that you'll see in the update of the guidelines. We decided <coughs> to sort of start with a fresh slate um, because we had time issues. We had the target coming and we needed something. One of the biggest bits in there will be the change to the World Health Organisation centiles. Um, and that's quite a challenge because we don't have a growth chart and we don't have consensus yet on the 5 to 18 year old and what to do and which growth charts to use in that particular group. But um, the TAG, the technical advisory group, is coming together um, in June or early July to, to just make a consensus of what we will use in the interim of, of good evidence. Right, so that'll be later than the guidelines? Potentially, yeah. We think we'll put the we'll put the guidelines out to help for the under fives and the adults, and we'll just have a bit of a gap in the middle. But we'll, we'll we'll suggest continuing with the current status until we can get some consensus on what to do with the organisation charts around the five to eighteen year old. Question: um, Could you please expand on the referral pathways? Um, in terms of how that will come about. I'm just trying to conceptualise that. You said that we don't want to put a burden on the health system by referring them to paediatricians. So how do we refer them to final order interventions? Yeah. 
So this is going to be the piece of work, I think, that's the largest piece of work for districts to work through because, um, because how you refer out of health and into health is really a, really a big challenge, particularly when many of our community-based providers are paper or uh, phone or people-based services, and general practice is predominantly uh, an electronic-based system. So there are different regions are approaching it in different ways. The South Auckland region are looking at a regional referral hub and then um, in that hub having the contacts with the community and the support agencies for families to be referred on once the referral comes in. And they will do the ongoing update to check that that program exists or is around. Some, of, uh, some are using HealthPoint as a navigation service to try and um, ensure that all of the locally uh, ranged options are on there. Some are um, where there's a small community, the general practice is going to coordinate and, and make sure they know to send people left, right and centre because it's a smaller community and it's a bit easier to, to do that in-house. But it's going to be the one thing that's going to be the most challenging, to have an up-to-date, regular list and stock takes, whilst that might sound like the perfect option, they become redundant the day that the stock takes are printed because <coughs> when you're talking about community voluntary and NGO, provided services, they tend to be there one day and go on the next. And what, one of the things that you will need um, to have really strongly built in is some trust that the GP, if they're going to refer these families and kids out to services, that the service will respond to them. And that closing the loop is going to be really important as well. So it's going to be challenging. Yeah. So that essentially means building a relationship with GPs? So. Yes. <coughs> yep. Or PHOs or however, however the groups want to cluster. And it may also be with the before school check providers, so those links sometimes are a bit stronger as well. And then the GP has, has sent the referral to check clinically, that, or the general practice. It might not be the GP that does the clinical assessment of the child. It could be a multidisciplinary team. It could be the practice nurse, or the, they might have a community dietitian or someone else, community um, health worker in there that's a health professional, just to check the kids and the family's um, safety. And then the before school chief provider might say, well, I've co concurrently referred them on to X, Y, Z. Thank you. Just time for one more question if we've got it. Um, so Karen, just wondering um, who's leading the Māori approach or Māori strategy with the rest of the strategy? That's a big gap, Kelly. Um, the, I mean, the government is, at the moment, is uh, everything's for everyone and all the targets are equal to try and lift uh, inequity. But we've um, got a meeting happening. We've just changed our new chief advisor for Māori in the Ministry of Health, and the restructure has meant that that unit has, has completely changed. She came on board on Monday. So we're hoping that Nkoku and um, the Māori Health Unit in the Ministry will put a, a Māori lens on this. I've been talking with some of the Whanaura collectives, and they're doing some fantastic things that obviously aren't visible in the triangle, if you look at the triangle but are really important for lifting Māori health and health literacy around food, nutrition and um, bits and pieces. So whilst it doesn't look like it there, we're in the process of building um, an outcomes framework for childhood obesity program for New Zealand and future-proofing it irrespective of what will be in the triangle. And we're wanting quite a strong Māori and, and Pacific lens in that particular piece of work.